I was recently watching Mr. Who's the Boss and his video had this really, really cool looking lightning outline effect. So I thought it'd be super fun to try and recreate that effect in Apple Motion without any plugins. So the first thing we obviously want to do is open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, push Command, Option, and N. From here, we're going to select the Motion Project, and I'm going to leave the frame rate at whatever you typically want to work in. I'm going to leave it at 29.97 because that is the frame rate that Mr. Who's the Boss uses. After that, we're just going to go ahead and push Open. From here, I'm going to push Command I, and we're going to import this photo that I found on Unsplash.com and push Import. I'm going to try and have a link to this photo down in the description. Selecting the photo, go into your inspector, go to your properties, and we're going to drag the scale down until it fits in the frame nicely somewhere around there. Now, I know I'm going to want a duplicate of this phone a little bit later, so I'm going to actually push Command D to duplicate it. After that, we can go ahead and close this group and just call it the phone group. Now, I'm going to right click, select new group, and this time it's going to be our lightning group. From there, we're going to select the Bezier selection tool. Then, using Command Plus, we're going to zoom in. If we push space, and click and drag, we can actually move around the frame. And I'm just gonna quickly outline our phone using the Bezier tool. When you get to these corners, you can actually click and drag and that will set up your shape really nicely. Then you're gonna wanna push option and click and drag on this handle, drag it up to that point, And then it will give you a straight line when you click again. And again, we'll click and drag, grab that point, get rid of it, move downwards so we get a nice straight line. So once you finish your Bezier outline, you can select it and then go over here to the shape settings. We'll go ahead and disable the fill. We'll leave the outline enabled. We can change that over to a white color to really match the Mr. Who's the Boss look. And we'll change the width down to something like five so it's nice and thin. Then we can go into the geometry settings and actually adjust the roundness if you're not quite happy with the roundness of your corners. And then you should be set to go. So if I disable the phone, we can actually just see our outline of our phone right here. So now that we have that outline, I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna throw it into another group within our lightning group. And that is so that we can apply it as a fixed resolution item. This is gonna be important when we start applying effects because otherwise the effects will get cropped at this line that's right here. So we can go ahead and actually adjust the height a little bit more so that our distortion effects don't get clipped off at the top. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just name this the Bezier group. Now we're gonna go into our filters, go down to distortion and select bump map. What we need to drive this bump map is a black and white image. So what we're going to do is grab that from our generators. Going to the left side, we can locate our library generators. And in here, you're going to see both your cellular generator and your clouds. I'm actually going to create a new group and we'll just call this the distortion. And then we're going to click and drag our clouds into that group and our cellular generator into that group. Selecting that cellular, we can go into the inspector and drag the speed all the way up to two. Then going into our clouds, we're going to want to set our horizontal scale all the way down to eight and our vertical scale down to eight. Then with the speed slider, go ahead and drag that up to a full two. Now, if I disable the cellular, you can see that as I drag the offset on these clouds, they start to animate up and down. So what we need to do is add a parameter behavior to continually animate on that axis. Click on this arrow next to offset and then click on this down arrow next to the Y parameter add a parameter behavior and select rate. Now, if I set this to something like one, you should see it animating up really nicely. Now this is gonna be probably a little bit too fast, so I'm gonna set it down to something like 0.5. Now that we've done that, we can actually disable the cloud so we don't have to look at them any longer. Now we can go into our bump map and click and drag our clouds layer. And you'll see how that's actually offsetting the outline that we drew in the Bezier group. From here, we can set stuff like the direction, which I always like to set the direction so it's actually moving more vertically, just like so. And then you can also adjust your amount. Now, this is gonna be way too much, but you get the idea. I'm gonna actually just leave it at 0.1. I wanna add another group that's working off of this initial Bezier group. We could duplicate it, but I prefer to actually use a clone layer, and that's gonna be for specific reasons a little further down. So to create a clone layer, we're gonna push K. Now, the clone layer is going to inherit any changes we make to this initial group. So if we apply a different color or an animation to it, it's gonna to apply to this clone layer as well. We'll go on up into our filters, distortion, and select bump map once more. This time, we're gonna drag in the cellular effect, and you can actually see it's starting to take place here on the edges. It's got this really cool kind of lightning effect happening. We can, of course, change the direction on this to something like 25, so it's a little bit more vertical up and down. 
and we can drag up the amount to whatever we prefer. This is definitely too much, so let's go ahead and set this to something like 0 0.2. There we go, it's looking really nice. Now with this Bezier group, I'm gonna do one more clone layer, so I'm gonna push K, and I'm gonna reapply that same clouds layer to this extra clone layer. So we'll go ahead and push Command C to copy the bump map, Command V to paste it on there. Then we can just adjust the direction a little bit and now you can see we've got this really cool looking electric line around our outline. So now that we have all of these lines being drawn on, we definitely want some glow coming off of it. So what we're gonna do is actually select the Bezier layer that's within our Bezier group and that is because we want the same distortion elements that we added, the bump maps, to apply to the glow so it gives it this kind of smoke effect. Selecting that Bezier group, We'll go on up to filters, we'll go down to glow, and we'll select neon. Now we can go ahead and set the outer brightness to something like 0 0.5, and then we can set the outer glow amount considerably larger, and you'll see how that bump map is actually affecting the smoke elements, really, really adding to the effect. Now we'll definitely need to adjust the inner brightness, getting it to look exactly as we want. So you'll just want to play around with these settings until you are happy. Now one last thing I want to do is actually create a layer, a cutout of this phone. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this Bezier group, not clone it, we're going to duplicate it. That way the effects we apply to this layer don't affect the other layers. Then we'll go ahead and go into our style settings here. We'll enable fill and disable the outline. And this is actually looking pretty cool if you wanted this for something else. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the neon effect on it. And then we'll just go ahead and drag this Bezier copy into our phone layer. In here, we're gonna select this top group. We'll right click it and select add image mask. And so now if I enable this phone layer, then we take this Bezier copy and drag it into the image mask layer. It's going to automatically cut out the phone for us. So this top layer is actually just the phone, whereas this bottom layer is the entire photo. With the lowest photo selected, we'll go up to filters, color, and select brightness. Then in here, we can go ahead, click and add a keyframe. We'll move forward about a second and then drop that down in darkness until we are happy. Maybe not too much, but just so that it really makes the initial photo stand out. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get this line drawing on. Selecting that original Bezier line that's within the Bezier group, we'll go on up to Behaviors, we'll go down to Shape and select Right On. Now all we need to do is change the speed over to Ease Both. Then finding the Right On parameter here in our timeline, we can actually set how long this takes to draw on. I'll just go ahead and go in about one second and we'll push O. And so now it's going to take exactly a second for this to draw on, just like so. Perfect, we now have this really awesome looking electrical outline around our phone. We could also go into that initial Bezier group and change the color. So we could change it over to a blue color if we wanted or change it over to red. So it's completely up to you how you want this to look. Now I'm sure a comment I'm gonna see a lot on this video is how can we get this effect over into Final Cut Pro? I am definitely working on it. I don't know if the right on animation is possible but you can get this really cool outline lightning effect. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see a tutorial on that. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.